Greetings. It is a Sunday afternoon in Katy, Texas. Today I'm going to paint a lemon still life. Here's a photo again. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Maybe omit the plate. I'm not sure yet. Uh, what I'm going to start with, since it's a black canvas, what I'm going to do is take the biggest, like a one inch angled brush here. I'm going to put this down. Sorry, not a lot of room today. Uh, but we'll make it work. I'm going to take some of the yellow with the dirty brush, which has a little like green on it. And I'm going to take some yellow with the green. Mix it up. It's okay to have a little green in that. Because that will tone it down a little bit, the yellow. Alright. So I'm going by off these lemons that I showed you the picture of to begin with. I'm going to change it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is create a horizon line with the yellow where the table will be so I'm gonna start from left to right even though I'm left handed it'll make it a little maybe a little challenging this is just where we want to lay the fruit on top of I can always straighten it later if needed and once again this is on a black canvas kind of a nice neon -y, vibrant effect and what I'm going to do is add a little bit of white to it, a little bit of yellow, just clean it up a little bit, the color, and what I'm going to do is start adding some lemons. And now what I want to do is off-center it a little bit because you want to get it not in the center, the main focal point. So what I'll do is like maybe start a little bit here and then go pretty much all, all the way to here with lemons. So I'm going to go, and you want to break the horizon line. That's like a horizon line almost. So you don't want to be on top of the horizon line. You want to be on the table. So lay in some lemons here. Maybe a couple, one whole one to begin with. And have them overlap. You don't want to be side by side only. Because it gives a better perspective of the piece. It makes it more filled and... It creates a layer of focus too. And if something's in front of it, that means it will be have more texture and more harder lines and it's behind so we blurred a little bit. So I'll do a lemon here. Maybe like a peel leaning on it or something. On this one. And then I'll put like maybe another peel here. Just coming out like this. Use your imagination with it. You don't have to go off what's on the photo all the time. You can change it up a little bit. Then I'm gonna just lay in the, the I'm just laying in the the ideas that there's lemons throughout this painting. Maybe a wedge of a lemon. Upside down of a lemon wedge. Facing that direction a little bit. Um, let's see, put a lemon that's leaning against this wedge and this wedge a little bit up here. Maybe a full one. Don't lose all the background either because it comes in handy sometimes. Just keep yourself separated at first and it gives a nice effect overall effect to the piece uh, so that's a little that's pretty cool um, let us add maybe another piece here and right now it seems kind of flat but we're gonna add more values to this darks lights maybe a little green into this with a little blue and a little bit of red to neutralize it this will make a nice grayed down yellow because red and blue, they make violet, the complement of yellow is violet, and what happens is it neutralizes the color a little bit. That means grays it down. 
So I'm just grabbing some blue, mixing it with this color. This will make a nice shadow in some areas. This is not perfect. Let me, you know, as they get older, they get more bruised and beat up. So I'm just working the color here. Let's see, maybe put a little bit here, a bit there. Push this one back a little bit too close to me. By putting the 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 sh the shade the dark the neutralized color in the back a little bit, kind of pushes those back and leaves these forward a little bit when I start adding highlights to it. So I'll get some pure color, mix it with some of the neutralized color, and don't be don't be shy of the paint. We're gonna use a lot of pigment in these paintings, so it gets a lot of texture. Hold your breath if you have to for a second, just get the line you want. Uh, but then breathe again, please. So I'm just start, what you wanna do to keep your eye in, that will help you drag, move your eye around the whole painting is for instance, if you have some of this color here, this yellow, you want to just put a little bit in the areas of each piece just to show that continuity to the piece. It helps drag your eye throughout the piece and helps keep your eye in. So what you don't want to do is, for instance, have the most focus here and not in, say you, your focal point will be here, for instance. Um, if you put too much texture and detail over here and here, it might draw your eye off the canvas. For instance, this right here is pu pushing the eye off a little bit. So what I'll do is with maybe the background color or something, we'll keep your eye in the painting by doing something in the, in the, in the background. So I'm going to start add adding some white to the mixture. Not too much too quickly. You want to build up the levels of color values. So 1 to 5 is 10, 6 through 10 is tones. More detail in the front, less detail in the back. Out of focus as it goes further away to you from the foreground. Or you can flip it around if you like to. Eventually, I'm going to go to a smaller brush. And then you got to decide where your lights come from. So I'm thinking my lights come from this side, left side, upper left. And then I'm going to start adding more lighter values on that that will um, play with that light. All right, I'm going to clean my brush. And one second. We'll go to the next size down brush really quick. For a little bit, I mean. I'm sure it becomes handy as a nice cloth to wash my brush. And I'm still mixing. And this is Ala Prima, wet in the wet painting. Just trying to build up some textures here. Lighten up a little bit more. Lights come from that side. Use the side of your brush, just lay it in. Don't mix it too much. And decide where the light's gonna source is gonna hit. You can clean it up later and change it if you need. Don't go overwhelmingly. Um, say you can say, as I was told, you can say a lot without saying a lot. Uh, just hit it and go. Uh, don't overdo it with the lights. Don't you know? because they'll wash out the piece. So just laying it in. Let's get some of the pulp or the meat of the lemon here. Be a little bit over here. All right. 
So you got that going. Now what I'm going to do is take some white. Uh, I might mix it, the, leave some of the yellow in it, just add a tad red to it, just to pink it up a little bit. Then I'm going to lay in a tablecloth. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit pink right now, the color. Add a little bit of blue to it to push it back. And I'm going to take some more white, more pink. Uh, sorry, that got in there. Just to neutralize it and dull it down. Get some more white in it. Makes a nice, like, uh, tablecloth color. And as you do it, further away will be cooler. And the closer it comes to you, it becomes warmer. Hold my breath for a second to make sure I get that in there properly. Lay it in. Don't mix it, over mix it. I like letting some of that show through. Because if you see what's happening here, the black is playing against these colors really nicely. I'm going for texture in the foreground. Just picking up the paint. Took some from the yellow side. Next, we'll add some shadows. Because you're in, from your light starters come from there, you're going to have shadows going in this direction. Not every shadow goes in a straight line to each other. They're, you'll see it just the way you play it perspectively. It'll be pretty cool. Let me clean the brush. What I will do now is make a shadow color. There's some of the phthalo blue. Uh, shadow colors are mainly on the violet side, so what I do is take red and, and blue, a little bit of yellow if needed, that neutralizes it. Not the right color I need, but what we'll do is add some more red, some more blue, maybe some more red, a little bit of blue. It is, um, and we're going to work wet into wet, so it kind of like softens it as you go. So for instance, we'll start with the shadow to the right to begin with. And we'll go like this. And as they get farther away from the subject, they become lighter. Now you try to get the forms of the lemons when you do that. You know, like... Think of what the lemon would look like against a table cloth or a wood table if you had it. Or so you can always change it. It doesn't always have to be what I. You have an artist license. Do what you need to do. If you don't like a white tablecloth, make it yellow. If you don't like a yellow, make it red. So I'm going to take from here, go to here. Now remember, some of it's going to play off the other lemons a little bit. For instance, this one's here. And you soften it a little bit because it is further away. This one's over here. I need to wipe off some texture there. You go with the form. You don't want to just go up and down. And don't lose all what you got going on over the yellows and stuff like that. And then you hit up a little dark underneath of it. And you have a shadow that would be here. See how I'm blending the shadow into the yellow? Kind of softens what's happening in the back compared to what's in front. And then we'll do final highlights and stuff like that just to help it work better. Alright, just got one more shadow to go here, and then you might want to add a little tip to it. Sometimes that happens. Like that. Soften it there. There will be definitely something happening over here, shadow wise. And maybe a little bit here. Maybe on this side of it, this side of it. Here. Just 
sweater off my uh, brush. All right. So what I did the back here, we're gonna add a background color in a few. We just keep working on the lemons so to really establish them in the painting. So I'm going back to the mixture of yellow. I'm gonna take some more pure yellow. Just take the dirty brush. It works. Get some nice yellows in here. I went into the shadow a little bit, but that's okay. It'll work. It's just there. Main focus is here. So we're just gonna work it here. More texture, more details in this area compared to everywhere else. working and hatching, cross hatching, even though it's paint. With paint, with pens, markers, I have hatching, cross hatching. That was bring it to life. Round the bottom a little bit. And then this looks a little natural right there, so I'm going to clean it up. And just lose it in the back. Then what I'm going to do is clean the brush a little bit on my shirt, I guess, and take some pure white. That's and mix with a tad of the yellow. Get a different tone going here. And then I'm going to load the brush, as Bob Ross would say. Kudos to him on that. to get some more yellows in here. Because I was going too far with um, the highlight color. I'm going to take some of the shadow here. So I'm working quickly now with this. Just to show you. Same thing over and over again. Just keep hitting that. It's nice. And then this is a, um, right here is the reflected light. It should be really, everything has a little bit of reflected light. So I'll just clean that up a little bit to show you that there's reflected light here. Reflected light is, there's a warm side to cool side to everything. And that's kind of like the cool uh, reflected light from what this light that's hidden the object. So I'm going to go boom, some light, um, take some light, go like this, right here, here, here. If it's too much, I, don't know. I think right here is a little too much of it. I use a dirty brush, that's fine. It's good to get some of the um, stuff happening in it. Some of the neutral colors, the grays, middle tones, highlights. Let's bring it to life. All right. So I'll take some of the yellow, play it into the foreground. That would be nice. By doing what I'm doing here, here, and here with the yellow mixture, it will help keep your eye in the painting too. a little bit. So far so good. Now we gotta decide what are we gonna do with the background here. I can leave it like that, which I'm not. I'm going to take some of the red, mix it with the yellow, and actually you get a little bit of blue in it too. Makes it really nice. Uh, yellow, violet, so I'm gonna take and make a red violet. It'll be still in the same family, but you'll see what will happen. We'll just don't want don't. What you don't want to do is you don't want to neutralize it too much, or it'll look like mud. So you want to keep the color nice, and if it doesn't work out, just mix it again. Test out an area. So I got a nice neutral color here. I obviously need another plate, so what I'm gonna do that off to the side. 
rid of the spider for a second. And now I got a nice red violet going on here. Neutralized, yes. But it might work, might not. Let's see. I'm going to test it over here. And then over here. See if I like it. Seems to work okay. Let me add a little more red to it. I like that. So it's going to be more neutralized, I feel, here, closer to the fruit. We can always vibrate it up as we get higher to the top. But you also want to make it darker and darker on that side, kind of like we do with the lights on the east side, uh, left the right side of the lower painting. This will also give me an opportunity to clean up the fruit, soften this into the background if it's wet still. If not, it's okay. We'll, we'll clean it up. I got spiders everywhere, so bear with me. So I'm gonna clean this and hope not to get that. Alright. Just going around all the fruit at first, kinda like you're silhouetting it with the shadow. Just make sure you keep it clean. a little bit. We can always go back and have another piece of that in. So what I'll do is as we're getting higher up we'll lighten it a little bit. There's still the light will hit off of um, the background as it did to the foreground. So I'm taking some of the mudded color and a little white to it now. So the lights coming from that side so light in here Maybe darken in this area a little bit more. We're getting texture here, so bear with me. And don't mind the texture at all, it kind of gives a nice effect. Lay it in and move on. I want to actually thank my friend Deneen for this um, plate of. Um, lemons that we're using. And don't lose all the black behind it. It's always good to keep some of that. Shape your fruit if you have to with the background color and the table color. I'm trying to soften the table a little bit, which I'm doing now. Take some blue into the dark, because the blue itself is on the warm side, you know, if you add a little red to it, a little red, uh, we'll add a little yellow to that, okay. uh, we need some red, let's just do it right, sorry, taking some red, brilliant red, Lay it out. I can actually get out of the tube. There we go. I'm using Artist Loft from Michaels. It's a decent brand. What I want to do is just get a nice, like, reddish violet. Over here. Here. So I just want to light in certain areas, not all of it. You can take some light into there. Add more red to it. It's a little too blue still. Mixing on the canvas, so don't worry. Wet in the wet. So it's just red, yellow, blue, a little bit of white. Makes a nice background color. We'll clean it up a little bit better with this color, I think. Put a little bit over here. Just gotta decide where the light is and how much of it you want to have in the painting. Because when you mix it all together, the coolness of the background, even though it seems warm, will pop 
the fruit. Because you have the red, the blue, and just the way it works together against the yellow to make it look really beautiful. Just finishing it up. I'm just clean this up a little more. The sky. Take some red and blue, red and blue, go here a little bit, and clean up some of these fruits. Kind of got to have the dark part of the shadow, but as it does come closer to you, it fades out a little bit. Some more details. It's a little dark. Just make sure there's not too much on your um, um, brush because it will take away from what you've done already. Take a little yellow, bring this hump back out here for the fruit. Get some yellow on this guy. Details, details, details. Say a lot without saying a lot. That's the way I see it. So we're doing detail, 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 less detail, more details up here. And I just really love the brush for this guy. Just to show you what you do with the paint. Don't be shy of paint. You do a lot of wasting paint at first when you start painting. Either you're mixing palettes, don't get to use it all. Um, but there's ways to keep the paint from drying out. Like if it's oil paint, for instance, put it in um, like medicine jars or sealed jars, put it in the freezer, submerge it in water, stuff like that. So, okay, this is coming out. It's really nice. Now I'm making the big the jump here possibly. I might put some stripes into the tablecloth. I'm not sure if I want to, but let me just play with this a little bit for a minute. Okay, clean up the highlights. So So I'm putting a little highlight on my edge of my uh, brush. Just the tip of it. Come back through here and clean it up even more. I think I want to have some more highlight here. More stuff happening here. More highlight here, maybe. Here. A little bit here. Here. Here, maybe. Add it up a little bit this morning. Cross hatch hatch if you have to. Highlight there. Now I'm gonna take some a little color marbled. That's marbling your brush. With, don't need to mix the paint really too much. Just to clean up some of what's happening up here. A little bit. Okay, if the blue mingles with the color, then I'm gonna go back and go like this. Edges, even on the shadows. I'm still debating if I want to add um, some lines. In here. Don't think so. I think it looks pretty cool the way it is. We have a little bit of yellow. Oh, this yellow will. You yellow will bounce off everything, so you'll have some yellow. Maybe not the background because that could be further in the distance, but off the table, you always gonna have a little bit of yellow bouncing off um, from the linings and stuff because it ref it's reflect reflected light from the linings into the tablecloth. 
And I'm going to just a couple more touches and I think we're done. I think I'm going to clean that up a little bit. This up a little bit. My brush is really loaded, but I'm putting out very little paint. Taking what's on there and just working with it. There you go, lemons on table, ad lib the background, um, just use my artist license and change the way it looks from the photograph onto the canvas. This is Sam, come from Katy, Texas, I hope you enjoy the show. Lemons on table. <laughs>